Right, so a question I get asked a lot by golfers is, are they using the correct loft of driver? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you why you might be choosing different lofts, and I'm gonna go for some extremes. I've got TaylorMade Sim 2 Max. I've got the nine degree head, the 10 and a half, and the 12 degree, but I'm actually gonna take the nine degree head all the way down to seven, and I'm actually gonna move the 12 degree up to 14. I'm gonna show you who will benefit from kind of more loft, who would benefit from less loft, and some of the advantages and disadvantages of having different lofts with your driver. Now, what I would say, in an ideal world, you would be getting along and getting fitted for a new driver. But I do appreciate, particularly with comments that get left on my channel, that it's not always easy for everyone to get along to be fitted. And equally, Budget-wise, you might not be stretching to a brand new driver. You might be looking at buying something secondhand. So hopefully today's video will give you a little bit more of an insight as to what you should be looking for. And then ultimately, when you do hit a current driver that might be adjustable like the TaylorMade, because most of the drivers are now, what you should be looking to change the loft and why that might be a good thing, why it might actually be a bad thing. But for now, let's get on with checking, are you using the correct loft driver? Right, so I'm gonna start off with the 10 and a half head. I'm gonna use the same shaft, which is the Hazardous RDX Smoke 6.0 in all the heads. But as I put the different heads on, I'll talk to you about what you might expect to happen with the change of loft, and then we'll look at some numbers, see what actually happens. So if I were to hit just a normal shot for me, with the 10 and a half degree head, get myself set. That one a little pulley, a little bit drawy, but launching at 14 degrees, I hit up 4.4 degrees, spin at 2,800, so as a general rule, you'd look at that and say, right, you hit up on the golf ball, so that's a good thing, potentially. But if we look there, my smash factor at 1.42, that was a nice centered strike. So the little negative is, the more loft you present, the lower the smash factor, because less loft gets the ball going up, uh, sorry, more loft gets the ball going up rather than forward. So when I hit up as much as I do on the golf ball like that, 10 and a half degrees potentially launches a little bit on the high side. 14 isn't obscenely high, but definitely I lose a little bit of ball speed. And I also then generate more spin, which again is a product of more loft. Now there, I've got the club face a little bit squarer, but again, we can see high launch, hitting up, lots and lots of backspin. So even though fairly accurate, potentially for me there, 10 and a half degrees would be too lofted. Now, what I would say is a little bit this depends on club head speed. As a general rule, if you've got less club head speed, a little bit more loft will be a big benefit to you. So for me, for example, I know that if the 10 and a half degree head is potentially giving me too high a launch angle and not enough ball speed, what I could do is I could move down to the nine degree head. Now with TaylorMade, I can take two degrees off that taking it down to seven, but it's also gonna open the club face, which for me, isn't the worst thing in the world for somebody who tends to hit the ball a little bit to the left. So if I now get the seven degree loft head and try and deliver the club very much as I've done there, the key reason now being that if I hit up, there's less loft on the club head, that's gonna give me more speed, also launch the ball a bit lower, and also reduce spin, which should help me hitting the ball further. So now I'd feel more confident for myself that this will deliver more the result I'm after. And straight away, I prefer the flight, 
we can see ball speeds jumped up to 158, launched down to 11.9. I was a touch lower off the face, so spin jumped up, but still getting closer and closer to what I'm after. Now, I would ultimately say there that I didn't hit up quite as much as I would have liked. So, for me, I would try and hit up that little bit more. Now that definitely felt a little bit lower off the face. So I've hit up a lot more. Even with the strike not being quite as good though, we see that extra ball speed, the spin has jumped, but that's where strike is a massive difference. And one of the key things that golfers don't always understand is not only does the spin change with the strike on the face, but when you hit the ball lower on the club face, actually the ball launches lower because there's less loft, higher on the face, launches higher. So even though we see that change, spin is generally lower off the top, higher off the bottom. Now let's say for example though, I was somebody who maybe didn't get that kind of flight. And this is probably more what I see with a lot of golfers is that they actually, a bit like with the shots on the floor, they get their lowest point of their swing ahead of the golf ball. So their club's actually traveling down. If they get a seven degree driver in their hands, they almost just hit the ball straight into the ground. No loft and just no performance at all. So if you were somebody who potentially did that, definitely more loft could be of benefit for you. So if I then went to the 12 degree head, but actually moved it up two degrees to 14. Now this is closing the club face. So we suspect with me, this also might mean the ball would curve more to the left. But once that's set, we're gonna set up there now, I know I'm gonna be somebody who hits down. And definitely for me, there looks a huge amount of loft on that club head. Again, it's a great result. So we can see my clubs traveled down 2.8 degrees. We can see a lot of loft there, but that's then down to a little bit more of technique. I've still launched the ball at 13 degrees. My smash factor's dropped down because of the more loft. But the danger would be, for somebody like me, if I were to get my low point behind and have lots of loft, that one's almost into orbit. We can see the smash factor drops right down. The launch angle jumps up. The spin jumps up. And even though my club head speeds have been very consistent, we see vastly different performance dependent on how you deliver the club. So the idea of the video is, are you using the correct loft driver? Now there's some general rules, and I did say at the start, the best thing to do would be to get along and get fitted. But as a general rule, if you're on the slower end of club head speed, generally a little bit more loft will be beneficial for you because it's gonna launch the ball in the air and it's actually gonna generate a little bit more spin to keep the ball in the air. Equally, if you are somebody who tends to touch the ground ahead of the golf ball, that little bit more loft can be beneficial because again, it's gonna launch the ball in the air and keep the ball in the air. If you're somebody who does hit up on the ball, even if you're a little on the slower side though, you can probably get away with less loft. So the key is, and what's great with the adjustable drivers, you can play around with them, but don't play around too much and try and monitor strike if you can. So like I said, as a general rule, if you were to hit the ball off the middle of the club face, there will be round about the loft that is described. If you hit lower off the face, there'll be less loft. And if you hit higher off the face, there'll be more loft. 
But general rule, quicker club head speeds and golfers who are hit up on the ball will want the lower lofts. If you're a bit slower and hit down, more loft. And you might ultimately be one of those people who says, I play where it's really windy, I want to keep the ball down. Just be very careful you don't go too little loft, because if you don't launch the ball and get enough spin, the ball just fall out of the air and you'll lose all your distance anyway. So in a dream scenario, get along, get fitted. Even if it's a case of you've got your current driver that's adjustable, go along if you've not been fitted for it and go through a session. It's very, very possible that you might have a good driver. It's just not set correctly for you. At least then you'll understand from the way you deliver the club and where you strike it, what the setting should be. And then you don't need to be changing the setting of the driver. You just want to make sure you're doing your end of the bargain as well as you can. So guys, hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, like it and share it. Comment below and I'll get back to as many people as I can. If you enjoyed today's content, you don't currently subscribe, I'd love you to take a second. Just hit the button below, ring the notification bell, and then you'll find out whenever I drop a new video. Follow me on all my social media platforms, all under Ali Taylor Golf. Hopefully catch up with some of you guys down here soon. Stay in contact.